afternoon. I'm Lori Moore Merrill, the US Fire Administrator, and I'm excited to be able to tell you about our modernization efforts for INFERS. We are looking forward to rolling out a new system, and it's important that all of our stakeholders understand what's happening and when. So if you can see the slides on my screen, I'm going to talk through these just a little bit and give you some more information about the USFA, our data obligation, and the INFERS modernization efforts. The first uh, thing I want to tell you that I think is very important for everyone to understand is our obligation to have a data system. The USFA was actually established by public law under the Fire Prevention and Control Act of 1974. Now, many of you may know that this was just on the back of the America Burning Report that was released in 1973. And so we are obligated by legislation to establish a national system for the collection, analysis, and dissemination of fire data. Having said that, it's important to note that we can either operate it directly or through contracts or grants, an integrated comprehensive national fire data center that collects information and disseminates that information through analysis publication. But we need to address the prevention, the occurrence, the control and the results of fires of all types. And so we are doing just that over the last month. We have awarded and working with Department of Homeland Security, Science and Technology, awarded a new contract to Underwriters Laboratory or UL Fire Safety Research Institute. Many of you in the fire service are already well familiar with UL and their research efforts. And so this effort too is another research and development effort to build a modern analytics platform not just a data collection system where we do analysis after we collect the data, but that it's much more of a data fusion system that has live analytics continuously and provides information or intelligence back to you in a near real time manner. And so this is the new system's name. It's to be called NEARIS, the National Emergency Response Information System. And this system is to cover all hazards with much more innovative analytics than we have today. Not just the incidents of fire, but everything that fire departments are responding to today. And near to real-time information, our capabilities for documenting and using information about community risk. And so we will preload a lot of data in the system long before we start onboarding departments. There's a lot of data that exists out there, and we want to have those insights provided because once you as a local fire department can understand the risk in your community, then you're better able to build resources to respond to adverse risk events that occur. And that's the key because we're far less vulnerable to having negative effects, whether it is firefighter injury and death, civilian injury and death or property loss, if we better match resources deployed to the risk potential in our communities. So having said that, we're going to build Nearest so that it is mobile friendly. It'll be cloud based, uh, looking at providing um, access to very secure portals uh, via app. So it'll be much like you do with your banking system. When you log on and you have a multifactorial in, um, log on, we're going to have the same kind of security. It'll be built to all um, cybersecurity standards within federal government. And it will allow us to have much more real time. Predictive information is going to be a self service system. So not only will your department self service on board, but you'll be able to access your data at any time and all of the powerful analytics that we will have for you in the system. Having said that, some of the other key features, as I've said, you're already going to have a lot of risk information in the system by the time your department on boards. But beyond that, we'll do some rapid integration of your ongoing incident information, including connecting with your computer aided dispatch systems. As well as any other um, biometrics that you may have looking at field sensors, the Internet of Things, and so really using the power of data that already exists. Leveraging that data likely in a geospatial type environment and then mining it for continual intelligence 
of what is happening. And so we'll be dependent on a lot of multi-directional APIs or application program interfaces to make sure that the system can communicate, we can ingest data from multiple sources, and we can provide data back from the system as well. This is just a little graphic um, that might give you some kind of insights into what the system is going to look like. So each of your departments will represent a node and you may uh, connect with the new platform via a multitude of, of different pathways. And so it might be that we direct connect with your CAD. It might be that we go through an RMS system. If you choose to maintain an RMS system, please make sure that they have the capability to move data via APIs. Um, and so each of your departments will be a node. Now, many people ask me about the EMS data. And so we are um, discussing and we will have integration with NIMSIS. So the National Emergency Med uh, Medical Services Information System, they can produce data through an API, will direct connect and pull in the data and do incident matching within the platform. So we don't want to add excess burden to you. If you've already entered the data somewhere, we will ingest that from that location rather than having you enter things twice. And so on the back end then, Many of the users, and if you look on the right hand of the slide, then you'll see that this, uh, the information, the merger, the fusion, the integration, uh, many words that we could use about how we're gonna put data together and then be, be able to leverage that in a lot of different places. Uh, back to you, for example, back to your state, your state fire marshals for sure, we'll be able to have our researchers um, bottom five researchers be able to use data that they don't have today. And so just having data that's accessible and clean and quality data, we will provide us brand new insights, we believe, not only about the fire problem, but about a host of other things that we do in the all hazards environment, as well as the well-being and safety of our responders as well. And so we will be releasing very soon um, some new data standards. You know, NFIRST 5.0 is a data standard. And what that means is that's just the list of variables that you collect as data. And so we're going to give you a brand new list. NFIRST 5 is going away. In fact, NFIRST as a system is going away as well. And I'll talk to you more about that in a second. But you will have a new list of variables. They'll be categorized in at least four different modules. And so you'll see the CAD interface will be a list of variables. What do we want to pull out of your computer aided dispatch systems? And then there'll be a list of variables that you will enter when you go on an incident. So the incident module as well, it will be very minimized. And so today we have hundreds and hundreds of codes. Those are going away. Uh, there's no need for that. Today we can uh, harness data in much more effective ways, and so we don't need to code everything, uh, every single way a fire started. We just need to know, was it a fire? What was burning? And then the incident investigation data will have more of those variables that will be collected uh, by other people. And then, of course, our exposure data that we want to make sure that we're documenting your exposures because of the plague we have now from traumatic injury uh, mentally and also from our exposures to carcinogens. And so we want to make sure that we are gathering data for your safety and well-being as well. So here's what the timeline looks like. So as we continue down the path, this year we've already kicked off the project. Uh, UL FSRI is well underway. And so we anticipate having an initial operating component or an IOC by the end of this year, 2023. And we'll start to test some different CAD systems. We'll start to uh, connect some uh, departments who are particularly data savvy perhaps, and let them test the initial component. Then in 24, we'll complete the component build and be able to start onboarding in earnest across the nation. And so we will do heavy onboarding in 24. We'll wrap that up in early 25. And as we're doing that wrap up, we will also begin to archive the current inverse data. So we're not throwing anything out, but we will archive it. Should anyone want it, you'll have access to that. We will not be commingling that data with the new system. First of all, the data variables will not match um, completely. And so, and the data is pretty bad shape. And so um, uh, we do not want to commingle it with our new quality and quantity of data. So in 25, we will decommission 
the current infer system and nearest will become the nation's uh, fire data platform. So having said that, what's next? Well, the nearest platform, as I said, will eventually replace our legacy system known as INFERS or the National Fire Incident Reporting System. Once NEARES is developed and operational, then we will migrate you over to the new platform. Hopefully that will happen by year end and certainly throughout 2024 and early 25. For now, please maintain status quo and what you're doing by entering your data in the INFERS system because we don't want a lapse. We'll still be able to use that data. Um, we'll bridge some of it um, in intelligence or at least get the information out of it. As I said, we won't be commingling it, but we don't want to have a huge gap. Um, so we'll just put a marker when you transition over. We'll know where you started and where you stopped with the two systems. And so we'll be keeping you fully apprised. Uh, we're going to establish some technical panels and information panels to make sure we're communicating effectively with the fire service uh, and making sure that you know exactly what's going on as we do this system bill and bring up the changes. So where can you get more information? Well, if you have questions, stay tuned. You can go um, just Google nearest or look at usfa.fema.gov. Uh, infers are nearest. You can find these links and check out the frequently asked questions and we continuously update this. So every time we get new questions, we put them up and add the answers. So much of what you're thinking about asking, others have already asked. And so we've compiled that and that'll be there for you. You can also see nearest at ul.gov, or excuse me, .org. Uh, if you want more information, you can certainly reach out to that email box as well. So there'll be a lot of more information that's coming your way in the near future. So with that, I want to wrap up this session, and I know you're looking forward to hearing much more. We're looking forward to sharing this with you. I hope you're excited. We are excited at USFA uh, because it's a brand new day for data across our nation. So thank you so much for sharing this time with me. I look forward to seeing you out and about while I am uh, traveling throughout the nation. Please say hi. Please uh, ask any questions. Please reach out to us if you have other questions about what you've seen and heard today. So I'm grateful for the time that I've had with you. Thank you, and until next time.